Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, and welcome to part four of the six-part series of the history of hurricanes striking the state of Louisiana. So in our last episode, we looked at the first 40 years of the 20th century and the storms that impacted it, and it ended with the great 1940 flood that submerged most of southwestern and south-central Louisiana before making landfall in extreme southeast Texas. This episode is going to be really, really short because we're only going to look at a small span of time, about 25 years. But in that time, two of the most notable hurricanes to strike Louisiana in modern history took place, both of which had long-term ramifications for the people and cities throughout the region. So it's worth taking our time to look at them in isolation. So let's go ahead and let's get started. The 1947 and 1948 hurricanes left the western half of the state alone, but instead ravaged southeastern Louisiana. So the 1947 storm is better known as the Fort Lauderdale hurricanes. It struck the city as a Category 4 storm. So after traversing Florida, it still had enough punch to strike Louisiana as a strong Category 2 hurricane. The storm passed directly over New Orleans, which was the first time in 30 years. The storm surge overtopped the recently constructed Orleans Parish seawall, which I'm standing on right now, flooding a large portion of the city for its ninth time in a hurricane-related inundation. The hurricane was the impetus of the construction of even larger levees and seawalls around the city to protect from storm surge flooding, and in addition to the extremely high Mississippi River levees in place already. It wasn't until 1956 when the next hurricane struck the Louisiana coast. So in the meantime, the United States Weather Bureau began naming tropical cyclones, using initially only female names, leading to the system of name storms we have now. So the first named storm to hit Louisiana was Hurricane Flossie, which just nicked the Mississippi Delta on its way to making landfall at Destin, Florida. So Flossie dropped about 16 inches of rain in Golden Meadow, and its approach caused extensive closures of the rapidly growing oil industry in southeast Louisiana and including offshore. Now, ironically enough, the shutdowns caused more economic damage to the states than actually damage from Flossie itself. However, these evacuations of offshore oil rigs be would become more and more common as years went on. Same couldn't be said for a hurricane that struck the southwest corner of the state a year later, the legendary Hurricane Audrey. So Audrey struck at the end of June 1957 as a Category 3 storm at the peak of its intensity with 125 mile an hour sustained winds in between Cameron and Johnson Bayou in Cameron Parish. The storm killed nearly 400 people and brought in a storm surge not seen in the area for decades. And for over 50 years, Audrey was the benchmark for a worst case scenario for a hurricane striking the region. And it also proved to be a watershed for hurricane forecasting and warnings. Hurricane warnings and evacuation orders were given for the storm, but despite 70,000 people evacuating the area, thousands more were caught flat-footed by the storm striking earlier than anticipated, as the storm had increased speed after the 10 p.m. forecast on June 26, especially in northern Cameron Parish, where people assumed that they were safe from the storm surge. Hundreds of people were killed by the 15-foot storm surge, which pushed more than 20 miles inland. And most structures in Lake Charles had damage from the storm, with over 40,000 people in the region left homeless, including almost the entire population of Cameron Parish. In the aftermath of Audrey, hundreds of survivors sued the U.S. Weather Bureau, saying that the bulletins posted didn't adequately warn people inland of the dangers that a major hurricane could pose. The courts dismissed the case, but in their judgment, they noted that while the evacuation orders were not the job of the U.S. Weather Bureau, and that their forecasts were within the margin of error according to the technology the time, the warnings didn't properly convey the seriousness of the storm to those hearing it. The result of this case was that in the future, hurricane advisories put out would use more dramatic language to get people's attention, just like the ones we see today. So as you've seen in this series, when one side of the state gets hit by a big hurricane, while they lick their wounds, the other part of the coastline will get hit by a storm. So while southwest Louisiana was recovering from Hurricane Audrey, southeast Louisiana was hit by storms in 1964 and 1965 by Hilda and Betsy, respectively. So Hilda struck in October 1964 as a Category 2 storm, just the west of the Wax Lake outlet in St. Mary Parish, with 105 mile an hour winds. Hilda wrecked offshore oil rigs in the Gulf as it plowed ashore and brought a nearly 10 foot storm surge with it. Hilda struck in October 1964 as a strong Category 2 storm at the Wax Lake outlet in St. Mary Parish with 105 mile an hour sustained winds. Hilda wrecked offshore oil rigs throughout the Gulf as it plowed ashore and it brought a nearly 10 foot storm surge with it. Hilda was notable for three things. One, it dropped nearly 18 inches of rain in Generette just to the west of Landfall. Secondly, was it spawned the strongest tornado in Louisiana history when an EF4 tornado struck just west of New Orleans. And finally, 
The tragic death of eight government officials here in Erath when the water tower was knocked down by a 100 mile an hour wind gust with the water tower landing directly on City Hall. As bad as Hilda was, it paled in comparison to Hurricane Betsy, which made landfall 11 months later. So Betsy is notable for being a precursor to Hurricane Katrina through its path, its explosive intensity, and its damage to New Orleans. So Betsy exploded to a category four storm after just passing south of Florida and making loops around the Bahamas. As it increased in strength, it picked up speed to nearly 22 miles per hour forward speed when it came landfall at Chenier Caminata before heading northwest with winds of 130 miles an hour. Southeast Louisiana was devastated by the storm, with the region being under the eye wall for nearly five hours. Hurricane Betsy's storm surge swamped the Mississippi Delta, Lake Pontchartrain, and the newly constructed Mississippi River Gulf Outlet Canal. So along the Murgo, levees failed on both sides, as well as the Industrial Canal, flooding the Lower Ninth Ward and portions of St. Our parish, leaving people scrambling to their attics and roofs awaiting rescue. The floodwaters took over a week to drain and over 150,000 homes were destroyed by the flooding, with the federal government slowed to provide temporary housing and funds to assist in recovery. Oh, and uh, rumors quickly spread that the levees were deliberately blown up in order to save the wealthier portions of the city from potential flooding. Post-storm reports from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers stated that the levees were not well built, pumping systems were inadequate in light of New Orleans being flooded for the 10th, 11th time, and a rethinking of the protection of the city, complete with larger and better levees being the cornerstone of this strategy. Sound familiar? And with that, we will end the fourth video in this series. So one of the interesting things in my research of, on this series is how the lessons learned from hurricanes tend to vanish over time, leading to repeated scenarios when a strong storm lands into Louisiana coast. So for instance, the next 1915 hurricane for New Orleans was Betsy, which was the benchmark until Katrina. On the other end of the state, the next 1918 hurricane was Audrey, which eventually became Rita, and then eventually Laura in 2020. So in our fifth episode in the series, we're gonna go from Betsy to 2005, so where we're going to have hurricanes loop around the coast, major hurricanes almost collapse overnight just before landfall, and the historic hurricane season of 2005 and hurricanes Katrina and Rita. I'll see you then.